Hi everyone, this is Todd with the Prepper website, doing another edition of Commentary and Stuff, raw, unedited, and with a lot of uhs and ums. Now, Commentary and Stuff is um, a little video that I do of the favorite of my favorite articles throughout the week. So I post a lot of content, but there are just some that really have got my attention. So I uh, just kind of want to point those out to you, maybe comment a little bit on them. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, over at the Organic Prepper, um, 20 places to find local food and family farms near you. Um, uh, great resources here. There's 20 that you can uh, click on. Uh, most of the time, click in your uh, zip code or your area and find places um, of interest for you. Because, you know, we, we talk a lot about organic foods and uh, farmers markets and all that kind of stuff. So here's the question is, where do I find local organic? Where do I find raw milk? And join our herd share. Anyway, so like in my area in Houston, you would think that there, there's a ton of farmers markets. But really, I mean, there's one that's really close by, but they're only open Thursday through Saturday. And then um, there's others that are that are about 30, 45 minutes away from me. So you would think that there's a lot of them, so it's kind of hard to find sometimes. Um, sometimes they're just kind of hidden and you just need to ask around. But anyway, this is a good resource for you, um, for your area, to find out uh, if there's some, some places, some farmer's markets, some uh, CSAs that you can get involved with. So go ahead over to the Organic Prepper to check those out. And like always, all these links are going to be uh, below the video. Okay, over at the Homestead uh, Hippie. See, Beginning Guides to Goats, and I think this is a, a great uh, article that they, um, they put together. Um, they talk about the different breeds, um, of course, the, the buck and the doe weight here, and then the type. So whichever breed, wh what breed is, is uh, what they're known for. I guess the, their, their breed is what, what, what they're known for. I'm stumbling over myself there. So meat and fiber and dairy, and so all those, and then talking about choosing a breed, breed in choosing the goats, how many you should have, uh, at least two. And I, I wish I had the um, the ability to have some goats. I just don't have a big enough big enough yard and live in the suburbs. But uh, I think this is um, good information to have if you're considering a good starting place. Uh, let me say. So if you if you um, are considering goats, this needs to be. And this could be like a very first stop. But you need, you need to go and you need to be very well. Um, referenced on this information and make sure that you do a lot of research before you go ahead and jump into that. Okay, over at Ready Nutrition, there was a question asked, uh, how do I get my insurance company to allow for extra medication? Um, so this question was put out, and I guess to the community, so I don't know if Tess would put it out on her Facebook page or um, where she where she brought, or brought that up to their attention. But uh, one of the, somebody that responded back said, that they um, that their prescriptions can be filled every 21 to 23 days, so they've really looked into it there. And if their doctor, if they they go ahead and, and uh, renew, refill their prescription there, after a while, uh, you're going to be you're going to build up to a month. And so that's that's something to consider there. Um, you just have to stay on top of it and not let uh, make sure that you're re refilling um, at the very the, the first date that's possible. Um, another idea was all day chemist and so this is offshore but they were shipped to the US so that's something that you can try I, I did go there and I tried I, I popped in a couple of just I'm not on any prescription med so I popped in a couple that maybe I just thought of and they didn't really come up so I don't know uh, what the deal is there but you can just try those out um, looking um, looking to uh, do it naturally and all those kinds of things. So anyway, uh, mail order, that's definitely something that is, uh, I know that my insurance company will, if we do mail order, they will, um, it's cheaper and you can get more prescriptions. And then there was um, this other one here. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this one right here and seeing if, uh, no, is that it? Seeing if the doctor would just give you a double dose of the the prescription knowing that you're doing it for insurance purposes, knowing that you can cut it in half. And now that's something to, uh, to talk to your doctor about if the medication that you're on, you can do. So go check that out over at Ready Nutrition. Uh, Gnophaglins, I guess I, I hope I said that right. Um, sore throat tonic, you know, with uh, talking from going from one healthcare story to the other, 
Um, I think with the cost of health care, and I know that mine's gone up tremendously. I've talked to a lot of other people that their health care just is not what it used to be. Um, I think herbal uh, medicine is going to be on the rise more and more as we, uh, as we move towards the future. So anyway, this is a sore throat tonic that uh, this author put together, and it seemed to have worked for them. So that's something to, uh, to consider. Cayenne pepper, turmeric, raw apple cider, raw honey, fresh ginger, water. So that's something that uh, a lot of us have at home that we can kind of put together and help for sore throats because uh, sore throats suck. All right, so Michael Snyder over at The Truth. And you know, we know Michael Snyder from The Economic Collapse, but he's got a couple of other websites. And this one is very interesting. It got some play on, uh, I think, on SHTF Plan as well. So not too long ago, there was 19, I'm sorry, yeah. So in 19 minutes, uh, 17 Transformers were, um, were destroyed. Um, and not completely blown up, but at least to where they, they wouldn't work. And so um, snipers were out, and it looked like a real, I mean, from, from looking at the story, from reading the story, um, they knew what they were doing. They had it scoped it out. They were ready to go. They knew their targets. Um, 19 minutes, they damaged um, transformers to the, to the point where they had to shut down. Now, now, the thing is, is that, and this was in California, I'm sorry, no one really heard about this. I mean, it's, it's come out in different places. Um, the chairman of the Federal Energy uh, Regulatory Commission, um, this is the most significant incident of domestic terrorism involving the grid that has ever occurred. And so we really haven't heard too much about this. I mean, we've got some people talking about it, but it's pretty significant. And this probably this type of stuff is going to be on the rise. So, uh, you know, Michael Snyder's asking, what if this was a um, terrorist who wanted to do nuclear, uh, a nuclear uh, uh, station, power station? And uh, we were, you know, they were able to do that and, and to cause problems there. So anyway, that's something that we're going to be living with more and more, um, just terrorism and, and affecting the grid. So how can you, um, I guess, getting those preps prepared to where if you're dependent on electricity to cook, um, having some form of, of, of being able to cook with propane or some other ways outside on, uh, you know, just using charcoal, wood. Whatever, whatever you can do, but thinking about those kinds of things so that if something like this was to happen, you're prepared. <clears throat> Over at the American Preppers Network, there was a, an article on wild edibles, and I think this is just good. Start getting started with wild edibles. And um, in the story, in this article, this person started getting interested in it. Um, they went out and tried to learn uh, a little bit of what they, um, what they have around their house. Um, then they, they hooked up with, um, you know, eattheweeds.com, the person who does eattheweeds.com, and uh, they realized that they were, you know, not too far away from, from each other when they, when they took that class. And um, just being, being familiar with wild edibles around you. Um, fortunate here in Houston, uh, we have um, uh, Meriwether at foraging tex Texas Foraging, foragingtexas.com, one of those. Um, it is linked on Prepper website, and he does a lot of giving you the, the edible and the information and all those kinds of things. But he does classes around the Houston area, so that's, uh, that's kind of that's cool. One of the things that, um, that they did talk about, though, was propagating um, the wild edibles that they found around the area. And you know that they're going to uh, grow for you because they're, they're found in your area, right? So that's something to, to consider. That's a good article to just kind of go get started with. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, once you start learning it, um, there's so much there, but you don't realize that um, just, just things all around you are very, you, you can eat them. They're very capable to be, to be eaten and very edible. So anyway, moving along, raising chicks over at Wo Old World Garden Farms, raising chicks to become chickens. Um, I think this is good because we, we do a lot of articles, read a lot of articles on chickens and backyard chickens and getting the coops together and all that kind of stuff. But as far as bringing them home and getting them, you know, getting them moving from where they are to uh, or, or you know, taking care of them to where they're um, able to move to the backyard or move to um, the coop, 
you know, that's something to consider. And so there's something here. Um, I'm sorry, information here that you can read uh, and um, to start out with to get you started. So that's something you need to go check out. Survival at home, cheap and easy garden tips, love garden tips. Um, of course, coffee grounds. Um, you know, this is this is one of the things that, you know, if you if you found a tomato that you really like at a farmer's market, now you could, he's saying here you can plant the whole entire tomato but, you know, you can save some seeds and go from there and try to get those going. And then, so you have all kinds of st stuff, copper, copper tape uh, around the bottom to keep slugs uh, off of your, uh, off any pot or border at ground level to keep uh, snails away. Make sure that you're cleaning your garden tools um, between cuttings so that you're not uh, taking disease from one plant to the other. Uh, let me see here. When you steam or boil produce from your vegetable garden, don't throw away the water. It is filled with nutrients that can feed growing plants. That's good. Using a soaker hose. A lot of good stuff over here. So go check out Survival at Home. Survival blog, nine ways to be more self-sufficient. And um, even, if you, even if you live in the city. And I think this is just a good, good head start to, to get thinking um, about self-sufficiency you know, it's one of those things that tends to snowball. And so as you start moving towards it, you you start seeing in one way how easy it is, but it, on another, you know, how important it is. So, you know, stuff like uh, investing in a water filter, I mean, that's, you should mo that should be like multiple redundancies right there, not just one water filter. There should be many ways that you can filter water and store water. Um, emergency medical, medical kit very um, very important if you don't want to build one on your own you don't want to take the time to do that go over to doom and bloom and buy one of theirs We've got some great stuff over there keeping a few hens i think you know uh, there is uh, someone that i know that i work with that has that started keeping uh chickens and you know it's it's becoming a thing if you have the room uh, a lot of people are doing it just for the health reasons of growing your own chickens and the thing about chicken or growing growing your own egg not even growing them, having your own eggs. But um, the fact that there's so much of the chicken, almost everything is, is usable for something. So that's important. Growing your own vegetables, even if you're in an apartment and doing it in a, in a little pot, just to kind of get you, get you going there, learning the can, uh, standalone freezer, baking bread, firearms, homeschooling your children. I mean, you can do that definitely in, if you're, you know, in the city. So something to go check out. Um, I, I briefly talked about this one over at uh, Survival Sherpa last week. Um, I had it ready to go, but I hadn't posted it yet. So a waterproofing hack that's guar that guarantees fire. And so using jute twine and wax. And um, he, he goes through the process of doing it. And uh, Todd over there, at Survival Sherpa. And so I uh, go check it out. And uh, I think that's a great, great thing to do, great uh, item to have. Um, over at my, uh, my other site, Ed That Matters, I did have a guest post. And uh, let me see, it's by Adam. <clears throat> and uh, this was one of the, th this actually got a lot of play, is night vision considerations for preppers. And I uh, got a lot of play because he, do he goes into not just saying you need night vision and, and going in blah, blah, blah. But talking about different technologies um, and giving pros and cons uh, for each one of them. So this again, this got a lot of play and uh, some comments. So if you're interested in night vision, um, this definitely a force multiplier. Um, go check that out just to kind of get you, you know your feet wet, and then you can kind of bounce from there off to um, a bunch of other um, a bunch of other articles and, and websites for information. All right, I'm going to end it off with this one. Uh, Rambo Mo over at Prepared for That. Low-cost survival hygiene, making lye soap from fat and wood ash. I haven't read an article on making a soap um, from wood ash um, with lye and fat in a long, long time. And so basically he, he breaks it down for you, um, talking about how cost, uh, caustic lye is and how... Um, uh, Danger it is so dangerous it is that uh, to mess with so you got to be careful with that. But he breaks it down. The only thing that I wish we would have here 
maybe some pictures but I mean it is broken down very well so from start to finish if you're interested in making your own soap uh, you've got it right here so this is one this is definitely a keeper um, even I'm hitting Rambo Mo up for uh, getting this into uh, the preparedness review um, for the um, the fall 2014 edition all right guys that's uh, me rambling a whole lot and even not even a able to get everything out that I wanted to stumbling over my words but hopefully I can shed some light on uh, some good articles that are uh, out there for you or hopefully that you didn't miss and um, they're, they'll be in the video and you can link to them below. Um, if you want to make sure that you get um, every, you, you don't miss um, an article, you can subscribe to the, the newsletter and it's going to be down here. Uh, if you click on this link right here, it'll open up and you can uh, fill this out and you will get the, uh, the Prepper website uh, newsletter every, every morning in your email. And the great thing about it is that it links directly to the sites so, or to the articles. So when you click on the newsletter, if you click on a certain link that you're interested in, um, it'll take you directly to that website. You won't come to Prepper website first and then go there. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it's uh, just another resource for you um, out there. And so um, that's something to, to consider. All right, guys, again, thanks so much for watch, watching. Uh, if, uh, if you think it's worthy enough, even with stumbling over all my words tonight, if you uh, give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Um, or subscribe and uh, spread the word. Thank you.